tending to the needs of a garden can seem like a lot of work sometimes. Many of us commit fully to the cause, but this can be quite taxing on the body over time. A basic stool is useful for weeding, planting, repotting, or simply taking a break. In this video, I'll show you how to make a stool using an old, discarded chair base. Welcome to Nature Yard Life. To make the seat portion of the stool, I'll start with a basic lumber board and cut four pieces at 15 inches each. These pieces will be laminated together using carpenter's glue. Next, they will be leveled out using a plane, cut to shape, and finished with a protective varnish. To ensure that the pieces are flat on both sides, I will run them across the table saw. This will take off the rounded edges that standard lumber comes with when purchased from the store. With one side of each board complete, I'll move the guide slightly closer to the blade and run the boards through again. The result will be four boards that are exactly the same width, with four square edges on each one. To prepare for laminating, it's a good idea to clean up the area of any sawdust or other debris. Now is the opportunity to align the boards in the order that feels ideal. Really, any order should do, but some of the sides may just sit better together than others. Be generous when applying the glue to both mating surfaces. In this case, it is better to err on the side of excess. Extra glue can always be wiped away afterwards, whereas too little glue could lead to a weak and potentially faulty joint. I'll use pipe clamps to compress these boards together. It's a good idea to use as many as you can fit so that the force is applied as evenly as possible across the joints. Two additional support boards in the middle are held together using C-clamps. This will help keep the glued boards in line and prevent them from buckling under the pressure. Next, the bar clamps need to be tightened in a systematic order, gradually adding pressure in small increments until all are secured. The clamps need to be tightened even further after 15 minutes once the glue starts to dry. Take note that the bottle may say that glue dries in 30 minutes, but it is not cured. For the glue to be effective, you will need to wait at least 24 hours for the curing process to be complete. Now, we wait. Removing clamps after a glue up is always an exciting feeling. This is the moment of truth. What we're hoping to find is solid joints with no cracks. If there are any minor cracks or gaps, it's not the end of the world. They can always be filled with wood filler and then sanded down afterwards. Looks like this job is a success. Before I start planing, I'll use a prop board to plane against. Also, to save my planing blade any unnecessary wear, I'll scrape off as much of the dried glue as possible beforehand. To plane this board, I'll move with the grain and along the joint surfaces. I want to take the joints down only as much as is necessary, so I do not create any channels or divots in the wood. Once I'm done, I'll flip the board over and do the same on the other side. With both sides complete, it is time to sand down all the planing marks. After securing the board to my workbench, I'll use my belt sander. Be careful not to stay too long in any one place when using a belt sander. They can remove large amounts of material very quickly. Keep the sander moving around the project at all times. These joints are looking good. I'm going to use my compass to draw the circular outline of the stool. If you don't have one, a bucket or any other object that is approximately the right size will do. Or, you can use a pencil and string attached to a nail in the middle. To cut this out, I'll use my jigsaw. The router will give both sides a nice rounded edge. I'll use the sander to smooth out the surfaces and the rounded side edges.
finish I'm using is a stained polyurethane mix in a mahogany color. Before I apply it though, I will need to prep the wood surface with a conditioner. This is necessary because the pine wood I'm using is a soft wood and will not stain evenly. Basically, if you can leave a dent in the wood with your thumbnail, you have a soft wood and you need to use the conditioner first to avoid blotching and uneven finishes. The conditioner can be applied with any cloth or brush. The instructions on the can say to wait at least 30 minutes after application. I waited an hour. It's time to add the stain. The great thing about this stain poly mix is that you can decide how dark you want it by the number of coats you apply. I'll lightly sand to remove any tiny stain bubbles or blotches and then attach the base. This is from an old, recycled office chair. The upper portion was in a terrible state, but this lower section is still in good condition and the lifting mechanism works well. I'll clean it up a little and then measure out where it should be attached to the seat section. This tape will act as a depth gauge, so I know how deep I'm drilling. I definitely do not want to go all the way through. Now, I'll secure it with four washers and screws. Time to take it out for a test drive. I'll take it. Send me over the paperwork. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it informative. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.